Hello and welcome to UDL in 15 minutes where educators discuss their experiences with UDL. I'm Louie Lord Nelson, UDL author and leader. Today I'm talking with Melanie Acevedo, who is a digital literacy teacher and a personalized learning coach for the Melrose Public Schools in Melrose, Massachusetts. Today, Melanie is going to share how they use UDL to develop their digital literacy lessons. Hi, Melanie, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. So, you know, I lived in Melrose for a year. I loved it other than like the 80 plus inches of snow that they got the year I was there, but that's okay. (laughs) And so I run and I ran all over Melrose and I'm pretty sure I ran by every one of the Melrose schools, but can you tell us about the schools, like how many and how many students, that kind of thing? Sure. So we're a suburban school about seven miles north of Boston. We have eight schools. We have one early childhood center, which houses two of our kindergarten classrooms. We have five elementary K-5 to schools, a middle school, and a high school. So we have about 4,000 students this year. So we've had an increase in um, our enrollment over the past several years. So we're about 4,000 right now, pre-K to 12. And then about a quarter of our students are considered high needs. And so that subgroup is EL students, English language learners, students with disabilities, and students who are economically disadvantaged. So as a district, we're working towards personalized learning and competency-based learning, and for all of our students in K-12 to um, to best meet the needs of the variety of learners in our classrooms. Nice. Okay, so like I said in the intro, you have two roles, and can you describe the different ones? And you start with whichever one you want, the digital literacy or the personalized learning, whichever one. So I've been a digital literacy teacher. This is my third year now, fourth year now one of those and we are a team of we're currently four teachers who work with all of the students in the district we're a specialist like art music and gym we have kids in k-5 to so our k-2 to kind of programming we think about digital citizenship and we think about kind of the parts of the computer and then we do some coding stuff with them and then in three to five we're really teaching kids how to be more of creators of knowledge rather than just consumers of knowledge and consumers of what's on the internet so that's part of my role is working directly with students. And then the other part of my role is this year, I'm also a part-time personalized learning coach. So the days that I'm not teaching digital literacy, I'm working directly with teachers and in classrooms, helping them push our personalized learning. And so I'm really working a lot with strengthening UDL practices and strengthening SEL practices and really thinking about how do we get students to take ownership of their learning. So I've kind of wear both hats, but the two jobs really blend into each other. Yeah, they really do. That sounds awesome. And like you just said, that the blend is beautiful because I think we still have, unfortunately, some pockets where people think about digital literacy and maybe they're not hitting as hard on, like, for example, that social emotional side or even just the depth of understanding how to use technology for learning. And so I can see how Oh my gosh, it's wonderful how they interrelate. Yeah, no, and it, it's been a really nice pairing. I've done a lot of roles in the district, and so this is kind of like my perfect marriage. Um, so part-time working directly with the kids and part-time working with the teachers and helping them strengthen their practices, more of a coaching lens or a, or a mentoring lens, it has been really a great uh, experience for me this year. That's great. Now, how did you step into this? Were you a classroom teacher before this? So I have been in Melrose for about 15 years. I was a classroom teacher in fourth grade for 10 years, and then I transitioned into some district-wide positions. So I was an instructional coach for a couple of years, which transitioned into the digital literacy teacher position, which is now this hybrid of kind of both positions and, and part digital literacy, part personalized learning. Okay, totally makes sense. (laughs) Absolutely makes sense. It does. It really does. So we chatted about that importance of digital literacy and then how UDL really helps those lessons be more impactful. So you have some examples to share and I'd love to hear them. Sure. So we have something in Melrose called the habits of learning. So there are these big four overarching 
standards that cross all content areas, all grades. And so we have problem solving, self-directed learning, communication, and responsible citizenship. And so our lens of digital literacy is really through those habits of learning. And we use a UDL approach in all of our lesson planning. We have kids in our classrooms of a variety of interests and passions. And so we try really hard to kind of design these lessons that are able to be meeting the needs of, of all of the kids in our room. Some of our buildings, we have a high EL population. Um, and some of our buildings, we have what's called a TLC program. So it's a program for students on the autism spectrum. And we really want our kids to all be able to access what we're trying to teach them because digital citizenship and, and those kinds of skills are, are really important. So what we've been doing is we've been using playlists and hyperdocs to allow kids to kind of move through at their own pace. So we present um, almost like a badge that they can earn. So we kind of gamify it a little bit where they're they're trying to earn earn a badge. And so we just finished one right now for goal setting with third, fourth, and fifth graders, where they started with kind of setting a goal and looking at their self-assessment. And then they worked on setting a goal and they were able to choose how they wanted to express that goal. So they were able to make a Google drawing or a Google doc or to use a flip grid, which if you're not familiar, is probably one of the best tools out there. Um, the kids can make videos of themselves, but it's housed in a private portal and so that it's not accessible to you know the world so we've been using kind of those hyperdocs and playlists to allow kids to move at their own pace it increases their engagement because they're able to kind of be at a just right level for them and we use a variety of methods to kind of put across content so we use videos we use songs we use kind of this traditional you know mini lessons where we're standing at the front of the room and everybody's having these shared experiences but we've tried to provide as much choice as we can particularly with action and expression and engagement so that students are really becoming expert learners especially as they get to the older grades yeah we had talked about that concept of engagement and i think there are still a healthy number of people who think that, oh, students who are in front of something that's digital, they're automatically engaged. But then, of course, when we think about engagement with UDL, we know it's different. And so talk a little bit more about that. So you were talking about that, that hooking in with recruiting interest and through choice. But I know you also do some really deep work around that relevance and then the minimizing the threats and distractions. And so just talk about that. Yeah, so we try to set up an environment right from the start that it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to ask questions and it's okay not to know because the digital world changes so fast that there are sometimes kids ask me questions and I'm like, I don't know, let's go figure it out, you know, together. So we start right from the beginning, really starting to set that stage. And then we work through a lot of making sure that it's really relevant to them by all of our products are real world type products. So for example, we're, we're starting our digital citizenship unit with our third, fourth, and fifth graders. And their end product is to create something that will be used to teach the younger kids. And then we actually take them with us to go teach the younger kids one aspect of digital citizenship. So they might create a play or they might, you know, do a commercial or they might make a poster or some sort of website. But it's a really real world example of what they need to to be using and doing in order to create that knowledge piece, right? So we're not trying to just get them to look on the internet and find information and just kind of consume it. We really want them to be taking that information and taking it to the next step and, and really pushing them a little bit to have them be creators. So as much as we can, we try to make those real world products so that they can see that, oh, there's a connection to what I'm doing in school and what happens in real life. Yeah. Obviously, that connection, that real world piece, and that really just ties that into the relevance. And something else that just popped to mind that anybody who might be listening to this might be thinking, okay, time, this, this takes time. So how are you guys aligning this either with standards or thinking about that, that bigger picture? Because 
I really do think things like this get squeezed out because everyone is so panicked about time. Yeah, absolutely. So it does take time. And we are very lucky that our boss has been very open and, and willing to allow us to try things. And I think that's part of it, right? You need to have an environment where it's okay to take risks. And a lot of administrators that I've talked to are kind of moving that way of traditional methods aren't working. So let's see what else is, we can try. But it does take time. And it, it takes time in a different way way when it's it's a lot of time up front. It's a lot of time in kind of like pre-planning and making sure that we're providing the right pathways for students. And then once we're in the classrooms, we're guides on the side. We're really kind of going around and helping kids kind of push them to that next level. Or if there's a group of students who are struggling with understanding the concept, maybe they've done part of the hyperdoc and we looked at it a formative assessment and we're like, ooh, those friends aren't quite getting it. We pull them to a small group, much like you would do in reading and writing. We have digital literacy and computer science standards that we are following. So our, our lessons are all tied to one or more of those standards. And we're we're thinking more about the digital literacy and computer science practices. So there are eight practices of what they say a good computer scientist will do or will be. And so we we look at things like communication and research skills. And so as much as we can, we tie it to the curriculum that classroom teachers are, are using. So there's a lot of reading and writing and math and those pieces tied in, but we're, our driving forces are habits of learning first and foremost, and then our digital literacy and computer science standards next. Okay. And then you just touched on that other key piece, that assessment yeah. piece, because you mentioned formative assessment. So how are you all gauging the student growth as they move through these lessons? So we've done a couple of things. Common Sense Media has put together a fantastic digital citizenship curriculum, and we've used their assessments and made some of our own pre and post assessments for that unit in particular. And then we do a lot of self-assessing. The kids really are starting to get quite good at identifying where their strengths and where their needs still are and able to set goals for themselves based on those strengths and needs. And then we have some quick check type assessments like you would see in, you know, any class with some quick quizzes and those kinds of things so that we can see if kids are getting the content, right? So like, it's great that they're creating these products, but are they understanding that, oh, to be a good digital citizen, I need to do X, Y, and Z rather than just create a cool poster. And then we do some similar things when we get to our coding unit is we have some, we use code.org as kind of our driving force. And then they have some built-in assessments, but we also have some like quick quizzes and those kinds of things that we use to help, help students choose some of their pathways. Yeah, so then you've got a mixture there, and it does sound like that students, they're attentive to how they're growing. They're able to see their own growth, which we know that's necessary for our students to become expert learners. They need that kind of practice. Absolutely. And I was also thinking about how these students are gaining practice in that, especially, well, all of the areas, all six of them. But I was really thinking about the strategic and goal-directed piece as they're learning how to build and create and, and, and move up blooms, but they're doing that within this digital environment, which is so valuable. Yeah, and it's the way of the future, right? We're preparing kids for jobs that we don't even know exist yet. So our job as teachers, and, and especially as digital literacy teachers, is to really help students hone those skills that will be transferable no matter what career path they choose so that they're, they're fully prepared for college or career. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate your time, Melanie. Thank you so much for giving all this great information and helping everyone understand better about how UDL is used outside of, I think, what we usually think of as the core subject areas and giving some great examples outside of those. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great to be here and I love talking with you. <laughs> well, you're welcome. So for those listening to this podcast, you can find supplemental materials like an image montage with closed captioning, that montage with audio descriptions, a transcript, and an associated blog at my website, theudlapproach.com forward slash media. And finally, if you have a story to share about UDL implementation for UDL in 15 minutes, contact me through theudlapproach.com. 
And thanks to everyone for your work in revolutionizing education through UDL and making it our goal to develop expert learners.